हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नमस्ते टू ऑल थ्रू दिस यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम शेयरिंग विथ यू द स्टडी मटेरियल ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज एंड लिटरेचर सो नाउ टुडे इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट द पोयम रिटन बाय रविंद्रनाथ टागर द टाइटल ऑफ द पोएम इज वेयर द माइंड इज विदाउट फियर really the poem is very inspirational poems and even the poem is remember us about our freedom fighters as well as the poem tell us about the freedom exactly what is a freedom so the poem is very important very essentials very good all of you those who hear it those who learn it those who understand it now all of you knows that rabindranath tagore is the pride of india rabindranath tagore who was born in 1861 and died in 1941 tagore is a native of calcutta tagore who wrote in bengali and often translated his own work into english rabindranath tagore won the nobel prize for literature in 1913 the first asian person to receive the honor he wrote poetry fiction drama essay and songs promoted reforms in education aesthetics and religion and in his late 60s he even turned to the visual arts producing 2500 paintings and drawings before his death so where the mind is without fear where the mind is without fear is a pre independent poem where the mind is without fear is a pre independent poem in which the poet sincerely urges to god to awake his fellow being for the realization that the essential need to live in a free and united country he wants his countrymen to awake and enjoy the life of full dignity and honor so before going to discuss the poem before going going to discussion of the poem we are going to learn about the poems or try to listen the poem where the mind is without fear and the head is held high where the knowledge is free where the world has not lost been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms towards the perfections where the clear stream of reasons has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit where the mind is led forward by the into ever widening thought and action into that haven of freedom my father let my let my country awake my father let my country so students try to understand the poem this poem is a contemplation of a state of being place in time and a way of living into which the author tagore wishes his country india would awaken the first nine lines of the poem present a number of statements in which begin with the word air these statements are each positive attributes which tagore is hoping india will achieve the poem resolves by finishing all of these sentences and tagore making a plea to his father for his country to wake up into that haven of freedom the poem was composed in the early 90s when india was struggling for independence from the british rule 
is the poet's prayer to the Almighty, to the God, seeking his guidance and support to help the countrymen attain freedom. The poem is patriotic in nature. The poet expresses his love for his country and speaks about the vision he has for India and its people. Through this poem, he gives us an idea about the kind of life people were living during the British rule. The stringent rule policies, economical and political uncertainty were some of the factors that caused fear in the minds of Indians. They could not live a dignified and respectful life in their own country. Obtaining a proper education was restricted for various classes of the society, causing illiteracy among people and making them believe in superstitions. The British used the divine and rule policy against the Indians to make them fight among themselves. There was a discrimination based on caste, creed, race and religion. It was during this struggle for independence, the poet says that he envisions a country where there is no fear in the minds of people and education is attained by all. The people are enlightened and do not create walls of discrimination. He wants his countrymen to be honest and thoughtful. He prays to God, seeking his guidance, attending independence and awakening his countrymen into the beautiful heaven of freedom. So, the structure of the poem. The poem has been written in one single sentence. There are no rhymes or a regular rhythm as the poem is written in a free verse. The language is simplified. Metaphor and personification has been used in various parts of the poem. Can try to listen to the poems that will help to you for better understanding. Rabindranath Tagore was saddened the terrible lives of his countrymen under the British rule. State of his country in their struggle for independence. In this poem, he shows his love for his country and prays to the God to help them attain freedom. The poet envisions India as a country where the people live without any kind of freedom or oppressions and hold their head high with pride, dignity and self-respect or reliance. He also says that knowledge should be attained without any restrictions. There should be no discrimination based on caste, creed, race or religion. India must reach towards its goal of attending freedom and being an ideal nation. The countrymen must possess its noble thoughts and do away with all superstitious beliefs that defy logic and reason. The poet prays to God, seeking his support and guidance for his countrymen to have noble thoughts and action. He asks God to awaken them into this heaven like place of an independent land. Few of them I am going to read for you. First one. What country is the poet writing about his poem where the mind is without fear? So, when the poem was written, India was under the British rule and people were eagerly waiting to get their freedom from the British rule. The poem is written in the form of a prayer to the God, the Almighty, for a true freedom for his country. Second, what according to the poet do people tirelessly strive towards? Through the lines where tireless striving stretches, 
its arm towards public charge. The speaker wishes that his countrymen strive towards perfection without getting tired. Country whose people work without laziness is sure to achieve perfection in all fields and aspects. Everyone should be free to try and work hard for anything they desire, either for their own or for the good of the nation. The last question, how does the poet describe old habits? The poet describes old habits as a dreary desert sand. Habits that are dead are compared to desert sand because desert is a dry and fruitless. It is not green and life-giving. Similarly, dead habits are not useful for individuals and society. The people must not turn out to be slave of bad habits. It can affect their life as well as the nation's life. Hence, it is better to stay away with them. Thank you so much. Please like and share this YouTube for your better understanding.